All right, so Excalibur324 asked me to check out a video by Pancreas No Work. And it's the Forerunners were dominating 40K. And this is apparently part of a series, but I don't know if I've seen the first part or not. I do know I've seen by this creator before, but I'm not sure if I've actually seen the first part of this series. In any case, let's go ahead and check this out. Um, yeah, I am kind of interested to see what's going to happen. What a lot of people don't understand is there are things from the Halo universe that will really match up well with 40K, and people think that 40K is the unending bastion of absolute own zone. But at the same time, if the human civilization from the Dark Age of Technology came back to the... For like, if you just took a time warp and put those two civilizations together, the human civilization for the Dark Age of Technology would completely blow the Imperium out of the water. And that's just the case. Anyways, here we go. The Forerunners would dominate in 40k. Last time I discussed my personal favorite sci-fi to Sim 4, I said the Covenant could survive in the 40k galaxy. Oh, Crucially, I did watch though, this. I said, or at least I meant, survive, not thrive. They wouldn't mm -hmm. be winning the great game that is Warhammer by any means, just staving off defeat and giving the other factions a bloody nose when the situation called for it. Right. So despite what you might think, I wasn't just fanboying over Halo with all my might, because right. I acknowledged that the Covenant would be supreme. See, Imperium, Necron, and Tyranid fans? We can get along. <laughs> Until the Forerunners no. show up and wipe the galaxy completely clean, that is. Now I'm just going to fanboy over Halo. The Forerunners would be a horrible faction to put into 40k because it would be like if you put the war in heaven Catan into the modern day setting of the galaxy. Right. Not the Necrons, the Catan is their own faction. I should mention that there's going to be spoilers for the Forerunner series of books, so if okay. you haven't read those, I would recommend it because they're really good, but either way, just be forewarned of that. Let's do You see, I don't disagree with this because we're talking technology that's so ridiculous it just pales into comparison. Having some Halo lore, shall we? But before I get started, let me ask, do you like boats? How about boats with guns the size of houses on them blasting each other? Okay, so I'm going to skip this one just for the just for the fact that this is an older video and this will still not be active. That's the only reason I'm skipping this one. Normally I check beforehand, but I know this is an older video that he's done, so this would still not be I don't I'm not sure this promo would be working. If it is, check the description down below. If you have any interest in World of Warships, check the description down below and uh, see if his promo code is still working. In any case, here we go. The waves. A little bit of background to set the scene first would probably be smart. In Halo, mm -hmm. the Forerunners were the civilization that made, well, Halo. Seven of them, in fact, though before that there were 12 until they got exploded. They had roughly 3 million worlds in their domain, and their technology could do pretty much anything you could think of. Live nearly forever, Dyson spheres, and massive artificial planets. If it's a sci-fi megastructure or something like that, then the Forerunners had at least one of them, most likely several. They controlled the galaxy nearly without equal, fighting and winning a war with ancient humanity and its allies who were nearly as advanced as they were. There now, I'm going to pause that for a second. The sheer fact that he mentioned they had Dyson Spheres, the Empyrean doesn't have Dyson Spheres. A civilization that's powerful, to be, power, powerful enough to build a Dyson Sphere is going to be extremely brutally powerful, just based off the amount of energy they can produce. There were also the precursors who seeded the galaxy with life before being overthrown by the Forerunners. Not quite related, but if you haven't noticed, Halo loves giving its alien species descriptors for names. There was, of course, also the Flood, who finally put the Forerunners to the sword after millions of years of dominance, but mm. we'll get to them later. Their empire, the Acumenae, lasted from about 10 million BC to 100,000 BC. Now, if your only knowledge of the Forerunners was from the first three games, then you'd reasonably think that I've lost my goddamn mind. I mean, yeah, you could tell they were ancient and powerful, but there just wasn't enough info on them to assume more than that. Similar right. to mankind during the Dark Age of Technology or the Pre-Fall Eldar, they're just... Exactly. Exactly. There just wasn't enough knowledge on the Forerunners to get a good picture. You could theorize all you want, but it'd be just that. Theory, with a few scraps of information to go off of. I mean, the most you'd see are those shitty Sentinels that go down in a few hits, or the Didex Promethean that can be taken down with 556 five, rounds. This is because you're never fighting the Forerunners in the Halo games. You're fighting a shadow of their shadow. In the right. Forerunner trilogy of the books, and even with some of what we can see in modern Halo games, they're shown as one of the most powerful sci-fi factions to ever been written. At least before we start getting into things like the z verse where the Big Bang is weaponized into a mass-produced assault rifle. What? No, I'm not making that up. Why don't we get the elephant in the room out of the way first? No, not that one. 
In the blink of an eye, everything sentient in the galaxy is dead. Everything that isn't a Necron and maybe the Tyranids, depending on how close they are to the Flood, is just gone. If you don't happen to be traveling through the warp, you're dead. Depending on how you think it works, Cass could either be supercharged because of the rapid and simultaneous death across the galaxy, the galaxy would be racked with warp storms if not just have a whole new Eye of Terror created, or the Chaos Gods would all die out because everything feeding them just bit the dust. Either uh, the last one. Either way, just about everything in the material world is gone. But here's something about the Halo Array that if you haven't read the Forerunner trilogy, you might not know. As much as it was a weapon of last resort, that's at its highest power setting. Did you know you can fine-tune the level of destruction you'd like from it? It can be limited to only a single system, or even planet. So as much as they were the final solution to the Flood, they're also just stupidly OP weapons without killing everyone in the galaxy. Got a planet you need for strategic reasons, but the Guard has it fortified to hell and back, or the Orcs are there in the usual Orc number of yes? Not anymore. <laughs> Press a few buttons and now you have a nearly empty rock. You could also directly encircle a planet with one because they're just so damn big. I don't know why you would want to do it, but it was a cool scene in the books when some ancient human realized he had to Tokyo drift one around Earth to stay alive. The foreigners what? also have the technology to cross the galaxies at will if they feel the need, so theoretically they could just float them in and come aboard later to their almost completely empty new galaxy. But galactic right. scale death machines aren't the only advantage they have, not even close. For example, every single foreigner has a smart AI equivalent called an Ancilla in their bodysuit. Every. Last. One of them. They range in power from help with daily tasks to commanding entire systems of other AI. Those bodysuits also make the Forerunners biologically immortal to the point that one of them dying is noted as being a big deal. Before the Flood got to them anyways, but we'll get to that. Yeah. In this regard, they were the pre-fall elder without the psychic powers, except also their suits could still give them scientific psychic powers. Look at this bastard, he just force pulled the Master Chief for shits and giggles. Speaking yeah. of Master Chief, you know his power armor, the apex of humanity's military technology, right. with shields and armor capable of taking a plasma around to the chest and just keeping on trucking? Nothing compared to the Forerunners. It was declared by Guilty Spark to be roughly the Forerunner equivalent of a hazmat suit. Not real armor, <laughs> a hazmat suit. Even when he went from Mark 5 to 6 between the games, Guilty Spark was still like, why haven't you upgraded your armor, Reclaimer? Do you have that much of a death wish now that your blue stripper friend is gone? They had something colloquially called plasma <laughs> jockeys by other foreigners, which are engineers who had the job of taming stars for future engineering projects. Jesus. They'd go in and make sure the star was going to have a solar rejection or anything that would ruin the day for any foreigners nearby working on stuff, and just generally help the foreigners use stars like massive intergalactic Legos. Doing this wasn't a massive foreigner under taking that required their entire species resources and knowledge to undertake they sent in steve from the it department this is what the <laughs> miners did to get it ready for the engineers they didn't even send the scientific masterminds to screw around with the stars they could create pocket dimensions the size of a solar system fill the entire thing with actual stuff so it's basically a planet the size of a star system and then compress that space to be about the size of a football if you're not inside of it they mastered the physical world in its entirety i mean like i said the halo rings were bigger than planets they were regularly causing stars to go supernova with just their capital ships in their war against the Flood. Not a grand super weapons like what the Necrons have, these were just their battleships. Their weaponry could also atomize almost anything that it hit. That wouldn't even okay. be a reading of the lore to find, just plenty of the newer Halo games. There's a throwaway line in the Forerunner trilogy that they were powering the construction of an installation by tunneling to another universe and taking energy from it. This isn't a major plot point in how they're desperately trying to create the Halos to beat the Flood and are turning to major scientific endeavors to do so. It's like a sentence and a half of dialogue about some guy's side project. Project. Regarding the Halos themselves again, <laughs> oh, wow. not only did they kill everything in the galaxy, the Forerunners completely receded the galaxy with life after they were gone. Such was their intelligence that they set up entire systems to take care of the galaxy, even though they themselves were all but extinct. Oh, and those crappy Sentinels I mentioned earlier? They deployed those in the trillions. They made at least one entire planet out of nothing but Sentinels. Imagine enough robots to blot out the sky and force a planet into permanent darkness, and that's just a small portion of what the Forerunners could do. On top of all this, their starships are nearly immune to damage. I'm afraid I don't have fancy made-up metals like adamantite to impress you with. I just know that one took thousands of missiles and several railgun shots going at an appreciable fraction of the speed of light and didn't even get scratched. The cherry on top of all this is that they produced all of this at a galactic scale. They can go toe-to-toe -to -toe yeah. with the Imperium in industry and everything they have is just better. In fact, they could probably outshine the Imperium in industry because three million worlds is better than one million, though admittedly forge worlds are not. This is true. So, I'd say it's equal footing. I mean, they built an installation several times the size of a planet outside the galaxy, for God's sake. The only thing that's done anything like that in 40k is the Catan, literal machine gods of the material world in the right. setting. Their stuff also lasts damn near forever in what's essentially mint condition. Take even the Necrons. Sometimes when they wake up, their programming is going a little bit wonky. Meanwhile, most pieces of Dark Age tech that the Imperium finds are either horribly broken or corrupt into near uselessness. If it is a fully functional STC, it's probably sabotaged by chaos or 
something and it's going to summon a keeper of secrets the moment you build the design. <laughs> because as is well established, no one in the godforsaken universe of 40k is allowed to have nice things. Right. Forerunner stuff, meanwhile, works as good as it did when it was first made 100,000 years after the fact. Someone said in a Discord I was in once that the Forerunners still weren't up to 40k because the Catan could drain energy like the- No, no, no. <sighs> The fact of the matter is he's right about everything he said so far. Forerunner could. That's fair. And yes, I was that asshole who brought up an online debate about two universes fighting. Anyways, back on topic. There's several differences between what the Forerunners did and what the Catan did in this case. One, the Catan did it to species on worlds. The Forerunner could do it to entire universes, so there's a huge difference of scale. Right. Two, understand what all of that would entail. The Forerunners didn't just eat something that was put in front of them. They had the tunnel to another reality entirely, create and set up a system to somehow get energy from that universe, and then turn that energy into something usable. And to further set the two apart, unlike the Catan absorbing the souls of the Necron tier, this was apparently such a minor detail, such a not worth talking about accomplishment for the Forerunners, that it didn't even merit an entire paragraph in the book. The guy doing it was just like, yeah, just hooking up a universe-scaled car battery to the <laughs> system so I can build my megastructure, don't mind me. And again, like I mentioned earlier, you know how that one edgy Catan screwed off from the galaxy and built a planet around himself? The right. Forerunners did the same thing and built one of their own. It's the Ark. You could see the Milky Way from it during Halo 3, and they made a bigger one before that. It just made them mistake of existing within a hundred thousand light years of the flood and was destroyed. That's such a logistical feat that it's hard to even fathom what that means for the Forerunner's capabilities. Right. Because if they built it inside the galaxy, they have the ability to move objects the size of planets around the universe at will. If they built it outside the galaxy, meanwhile, that means they have the infrastructure and technology to move such massive amounts of material around that they can build such... That is sickening. What's even... <laughs> or they built the damn star megastructures in the infinite nothingness of extra galactic space. They could also digitize and construct mechanical bodies for people, which is what the Didact did to create the Prometheans. So if you still don't think they can match beings like the Catan, they did pretty much the same thing as what they did to the Necron tier. Relatedly, the process is pretty much the same, only you can weaponize it. They didn't even need the conversion chambers or anything like that. It was just point the damn thing in a planet and bam, instant robot army. <laughs> they of course were masters of genetics and biology as well, because why not let them have that too? They would more or less mutate themselves when they reached certain milestones in their lives by integrating the DNA of other forerunners and taking on their aspects. This also gave them much of the memories and personality of their donor, like when the Didact from Halo 4 gave his DNA to a forerunner previously known as Bornsteller, who after that was just called the Didact. The forerunner known as the Librarian even started referring to Bornsteller as her husband after this happened, what? she being married to the previous Didact, of right. course. Oh, and they can also biologically imprint your consciousness into someone else without any soul magic. Doesn't matter what race you are either, they stuck a human into a forerunner once. To hell with it, give someone the memories of a dog and let it speak to the guy every now and then. They could de-evolve you too, just in case all of this sounded too, you know, progressive and scientific for you. They Return to monkey. Did that to ancient humanity after they defeated them in a war. And because most of this video is just going to be disjointed rambling about the Forerunner's capabilities, let's talk about Slip Space again real quick. Okay. Well, even briefer than last time because this is a video for fun, not theoretical physics. Slip Space is actually a lot like the warp. Things can go wrong and people can straight up disappear into it. It has streams and currents that dictate how travel is done within it. It's also slower than warp travel, at least when the warp isn't spitting you back in time a thousand years. True. The thing is, this applies to the UNC and the Covenant. It's for Forerunner slip space, meanwhile, is nearly instant. They could cross the entire galaxy in days if they so wish to. A foreigner slip space drive will never vanish so into nothingness like a human drive would. And whether it's slip space or not, they can teleport entire armies across massive distances. On top of all of this, they don't have to deal with the forces of hell interfering with them or causing them to appear centuries before or after the event they're responding to takes place. Rare, At the very yes. best interpretation, the webway is still only equal to foreigner slip space, and it can right. still break down and be corrupted like the warp, unlike slip space. Again, like I mentioned, you can also do this in atmosphere, which you can't do with the warp. The only reason the Covenant didn't do these in atmosphere jumps is because they don't realize just how advanced the reverse engineered Forerunner stuff is. And you can bet your Emperor bothering ass the Forerunners know what their stuff can do. And because I feel like someone might say I haven't gone enough into specifics to justify this whole video, here's a barrage of those. Their ships had weapons that cause gravity to rip apart the enemy. Each of their infantry weapons does what the Necrons do to their enemies only faster, that is to say tear them apart molecule by molecule. They can use antimatter weapons on their ships which violently explodes in contact with normal matter because that's just how that works. Yeah, they had potentially up to trillions of warriors in their army at the time of the Flood War, and this was after centuries of disarming themselves due to political infighting. So unlike the Covenant, centuries? they have the numbers, power, and industry to fight with. And to top it all off, at least some of them had six fingers. I mean, what else is there to say? 
Six fingers. Maybe they Six had fingers. two tails, too. As for psychic powers, I don't think they'll be enough. The Forerunner's advantage in every other field is too yeah. great, yeah. Even ignoring the fact that they could recreate psychic powers to some extent through technology alone. Sure, the Forerunners are in trouble when Magnus or Eldrad take to the field, but the average psyker who could just about throw a fireball without exploding himself is going to be turned into mincemeat. Anyways, now's probably time to give some structure to this video instead of just continuing to ramble incoherently about Forerunner capabilities. Go for it. Let's see how the Forerunners would interact with the factions of the 40k galaxy. And spoiler alert for what's coming up, you're going to hear some variation of the words and then the Forerunners wipe them out pretty frequently. Let's start Probably. with the big lads. What would the interactions between the Imperium of Man and the Forerunners look like? Well, at first it would look just like the Imperium of Man's interactions with any other alien species that doesn't keel over and submit. Xeno, heretic, murder, kill, you know, all that overused stuff. And then they would find out that, oh shit, these aliens have triple our territory and technology far beyond us. Exterminatuses, what is the plural of exterminatus? Exterminati? Whatever it is, the Imperium would start dropping those like it was going out of style. Because right. trying to land the Imperial Guard to fight the Forerunners is just going to result in you having one less army of Guardsmen. Right. And fair's fair, a virus bomb is going to hurt anyone, Forerunners or not. Especially since part two of a virus bombing is setting the atmosphere on fire. But right. the Forerunners would learn pretty quickly that Imperial ships carry planet busters and start devoting more assets to their navy. And then it would be a very rapid downhill spiral against the Imperium. Of course the Space Marines would be involved in this. They're always involved. That right. being said, remember that funny little clip where the Didact drags Master Chief around like it's Gary's mod? that. They'd still be under heavy fire from any fight with the Forerunners, and because I'm not Games Workshop, I don't feel like giving the Space Marines plot armor. Because of the level of tech <laughs> the Forerunners are working with, they're gonna get cut down with little more ceremony than the Guardsmen. Ceramite will give the Forerunners as much trouble as it does the Necrons, which is to say- thank you. Anyway, that is to say it's not gonna give them much trouble at all. Plus, at a certain point, the Forerunners are gonna realize that even if the Space Marines are more trouble than they're worth to fight head-on, they can just annihilate their ships and worlds to cause them to bleed to death via the most mismatched form of attrition warfare. The yeah, the the sheer fact of the matter is the weaponry and everything else like that the forward is going to bark to bear is just insane. It just doesn't... It, it, I don't know what you could do to fight that. Mechanicus might fare slightly better no. if because of a desperate attempt to reverse engineer what few pieces of Forerunner tech they can get their hands on. The Sisters of Battle might make the Forerunners minorly confused when they gun down some lady with angel wings only for her to show right back up, but resurrective immortality is only so helpful when you just get gunned down again by some alien throwing antimatter at you like it's not a big deal. Or the energy sword gun from Halo Legends. Now that'll put some hurt on anyone. Custodies are going to cause problems for the Forerunners, but in the grand scheme of things There's they still won't be helpful enough to save the Imperial because as it turns out, 10,000 is not a very big number on a galactic yeah. scale. Yeah, in a 1v1, one one, the custodians have more than a fair shot, but it's never going to be a 1v1 for them. But let me introduce you to a more interesting concept. Okay. The Forerunners pacifying and integrating human worlds. See, in Halo, the Forerunners stomped humanity because from their perspective, it seemed like the human race as a whole was gunning for their territory, All rather right. than humanity cleansing Forerunner planets infected by the Flood, which was what was actually happening. But in 40k, I don't think it would take too long for them to realize that there's a whole lot of human worlds that, for whatever reason, would be more than happy to be free of Imperial control. Given that a driving motivation for the Forerunners is the mantle of responsibility, which instructs them to guide and protect the galaxy, I've no doubt that a decent amount of planets that fall to the Forerunners would do so willingly. I mean, it happens to the Tau. Surely the same thing could happen for the Forerunners. And while yes, it, it does come the caveat that the Forerunners are a bit more equal than everyone else, once again, this is just the same as the Tau, and it still works for them. By the end of this war, I don't expect the Imperium to still be a major entity. Maybe not completely gone, if only because of the Emperor, but certainly reduced to a shell of its former self. Relatedly, and admittedly this is a bit of a stretch, there's a chance that the Emperor wouldn't hate the Forerunners like other aliens. I mean, in 40k, there's the Dark Eldar, the Orcs, Tyranids, Necrons, and more. Those aliens suck. But the Forerunners, who of course would still be focused on keeping themselves powerful, would still be more than willing to focus on the greater threats to the galaxy, like Chaos. Right. An interesting result of them somehow appearing in 40k could be a sort of temporary alliance with the Imperium. Because as we all know, the Imperium is a god-awful government with how it treats its people, but the guys next door sacrificing entire planets to right. for Satans are probably a lot worse for galactic peace. Exactly. Of course, the Imperium is still a horrendous state, and the Emperor is, to put it lightly, a bit of a control freak. So there's no way the Forerunners would tolerate the Imperium, and it would be temporary at best. That being said, it's still something I find to be an interesting idea. As for the other species, let's go. The Tau are a brief talk. The Forerunners might be able to convince the Tau to peace talks, otherwise they're going to force them back onto their home planets like they did with ancient humanity in Halo. The various other minor Xeno species would probably be turned into something between client saints and allies. The Eldar and them would 
likely have little reason to interact. I mean, the craft world's in ideal circumstances, sit in their own little corner of the galaxy. If the right. foreigners show up and suddenly start wiping out threats to the Eldar left, right, and center, there probably wouldn't be much in the way of reasons for them to fight. Same goes exactly. for the Exodites. That being said, any fight the Eldar try to get into with the forerunners is going to result in there being one less crap. Yeah, it, it, the Eldar fighting the forerunners will be hysterically bad. After World Around. BL Tan especially is going to learn the hard way that at their weakest possible power level, a civilization equal in power to the War in Heaven Necrons just showed up. The Dark Eldar? <laughs> Say goodbye, Kamara. I don't care how many black holes Vex sends their way. The Forerunner's number one priority with them is going to be to slip space rupture a halo ring into that godforsaken place <laughs> since they're never in it to kingdom come. The Harlequins, meanwhile, might actually form a sort of alliance with them since their overall goals are generally more benevolent to everyone rather than just the Eldar. The Orcs are just going to be exterminated, like, wholesale. Oh, sure, they'll do their best to put up a fight, but then they some won't. foreigner scientist is going to catapult a star at them for funsies. I wish I had more to say about them because I do like the Orcs. War in Heaven Cork would probably give them a pretty tough fight, but modern 40k orcs are going to tragically be pretty unceremonious. Yeah, destroyed. pretty much. Same likely goes for the Tyranids. Unlike no, absolutely goes for the Tyranids. Like the flood. Like, their technology, the later stages of the Ford Nervous technology, will be built towards fighting something like the Tyranids. Uh, there's no mistaking this particular intergalactic swarm of locusts for a minor threat you can contain. A high fleet is many things, but subtle is not one of them. No, it's you might not. say that Gene Sealer cults could be an issue, but those Ancilla the foreigner have in their suits would pretty quickly realize that the guy inside is suddenly praying to the Tyranids and alert other foreigners to the threat. Remember, they all have one. The Tyranids, meanwhile, also don't have the same strength as the Flood. They don't expand quite as rapidly as the Flood, and nope. they don't gain information in the same way as the Flood does. Tyranids are all about adapting to their enemy's strengths. The Flood outright steals those strengths. The Forerunners would find it much easier to deal with them. And if nothing else, they can send in the robotic armies of Sentinels not have to worry about the whole biomass harvesting issue the Tyranids cause. Exactly. There are in fact reasons that they didn't just do that with the Flood, in case we were wondering why they didn't do that in Halo lore, but we'll get to that later. The Leagues of Otan, since there's suddenly enough information on them to talk about, might get along fairly well with them. The Forerunners clearly have no problem with AI, so they might even get the Forerunners to help repair the Otan themselves. Granted, the new squats don't seem to be that much more keen on aliens than the Imperium is, and if it does lead to war, then the extra tech the Leagues have won't be enough to spare them from the Acumenes' wrath. I don't think Chaos is going to have that much luck either. Unlike perhaps even some members of the Covenant, there's nothing to tempt the Forerunners with. Tempt them with the power? They have all the power they want exactly. and more. And the ambitious among the Forerunner elite aren't stupid enough to sell their souls to demons. Tempt them with pleasure? For one, their entire mentality is ensuring the galaxy is at peace with each other, which is inherently selfless. And two, they have access to to almost all the pleasures anyone could ask for if they really want it. Exactly. Why go for more? Because some crab head and dude said it would feel really good, trust me, and put <laughs> plagues on them and make them suffer until they join, perhaps? Well, they're biologically immortal, and for reference, the UNSC, who would absolutely get stomped in 40k, have curing cancer as something so routine a merchant ship's medbay can treat it. If the UNSC can do that, as far below the Forerunners as they are, disease is just not an issue for the Forerunners. No. There's nothing for Chaos to latch onto and corrupt the Forerunners with. As for actual battles, like with the Chaos Space Marine, Marines. Well, see what I said would happen to normal space marines for how that'll turn out. Demons would do better, but not by much. Zinch demons might pull some screwy stuff on the forerunners to take a decent amount down, but not enough to balance out what the foreigners have in number and power. And if right. they reverse engineer Necron tech, which I have no doubt they would, they'll learn how to shut down chaos. Hell, they might even team up with a few dynasties to push back chaos, since the forerunners have nothing against AI, and a few Necron dynasties aren't that bad. Speaking of, we finally have the Necrons, and oh boy, is this gonna cause some colorful arguments. As well as the Krork and the Prefall Elder. Are, the War in Heaven era Necrons could certainly put up a hell of a fight. While I still think the Forerunners are on equal footing with the Catan, the sheer amount of them around as well as the numberless legions of United Necron military would be quite the challenge to take down. The thing is, this video is all about the Forerunners facing off against modern day 40k. And the modern day right. Necrons are, to be frank, a shadow of their former selves, Massively. as is always the case with 40k factions except for the Tau. And Tyranids, I guess. They're disunified and war with each other almost as often as the Imperium blows up its own planets, and usually <laughs> for even less valid reasons. While I'm sure they've most Mostly woken up, there's still going to be some in slumber who have not and wouldn't be able to fight the Forerunners. Right. Their weaponry is at best equal to the Forerunners, and combined with their lack of unity and the Forerunners' supreme industrial capabilities, there won't be as many Necrons fighting on the same battlefield as there will be Forerunners in their construct. Plus, Slipspace once again reigns supreme. They can cross the galaxy in days if they need to. They can burn down your planet, and then that same fleet can be a segmentum over by tomorrow. And to top right. it all off, even if you do think the Necrons are technologically superior, it's well within Forerunner capability to reverse engineer Necron technology. I mean, the foreigners are so advanced that they consider binary primitive to them. Binary, that thing even Dark Age humanity used in its tech? One foreigner found an ancient foreigner shipped and was shocked that they ever used it. That's how far they've gone.
and beyond it, technologically speaking. The Forerunners, to throw one last bit of disconnected rambling at you, also have something called the Domain. While the Domain is absolutely monstrous and will be covered in a later video because this is going to be a three-parter miniseries, the best way to simplify it is Forerunner Internet. While information <laughs> can be lost in it, more recent stuff is fairly easy for the Forerunners to access. So a Forerunner can research into Necron tech, put his findings into the Domain, and bam! Every Forerunner in the galaxy can now know how that particular piece of technology works, what its strengths are, and most importantly for the military, how to counter it. There's far, right. far more to the domain, but for now, let's just leave it at that. And if nothing else, the foreigners had devices accessible by individual people that could accelerate time so quickly that billions of years would pass for them in an instant. I don't care what you are, Necron or not, that's gonna mess you up. There's a lot, right. a lot more I could talk about the forerunners, how they weaponized their own method of FTL, the deeper concepts of the domain, how their FTL itself started diving into metaphysics, but by now I'm sure you get the point of this right. video. In modern day 40k, I think the foreigners would reign supreme and force the mantle onto the Milky Way galaxy as they did millions of years ago. And of course, this is one big opinion piece, so please tell me how wrong or right you think I am. I fully admit I'm biased in favor of Halo on this, but so what? Biases make life fun. It's good to hear a differing opinion every now and then. Either way, here's part two. There's one last major faction, I guess, to cover in Halo for next time, and they're hungry. Now I shall talk. And you shall listen. <laughs> As always, thank you to my wonderful ch Okay, so. There wasn't a lot that I didn't... I agree with almost everything that he said. Um, sheer fact of the matter is, the... We talk about Warhammer and the Imperium and everything like that, but the Imperium is a absolute shadow of what the Dark Age of Technology... Dark Age, Dark Age of Technology humanity was capable of. Um, the technology humanity had was so extreme that even the orcs were trying to put together non-aggression packs with humanity because of how absolutely powerful humanity was during the Dark Age of Technology. Orcs aren't trying to do that now. Same thing with this. The Forerunners will be, like Dark Age of Technology Humanity, only even more advanced. So, like, I'm not going to sit here and try to say, oh, the Astartes would blah, blah, The Astartes would cause a problem because of their combat experience, but they would, it would be like them fighting against... <laughs> The only thing that the forerunners would have to do is adjust their tactics. And if they didn't want to fight them, they wouldn't have to. They could simply just go at them from orbit, things like that. Um, of course, you can talk about the halo rings all day long. Oh, look, they'll fire off the halo rings. Okay, great. Um, that's, that's, a, that's a pitfall a lot of Star Wars fans get into when they start talking about an invasion of the Imperium by the Empire, all this other kind of stuff. They're like, oh, well, you know, the Death Star just shows up above Terra Black. Would not work like that because gravity wells are a thing for Star Wars technology, first off. And second off, second off you're not going to get a chance to do that. <laughs> In any case, I agree with almost everything he said. Um, even, wow, he was talking that fast and it still took him 25 minutes. It was really good, though. I appreciate this kind of stuff because, well, it, I like agreeing with people on something, like, even though 40K is my passion, I can admit when something like this comes around, yeah, this is a no-win scenario for anyone in the Imperium. Or anyone in the 40k galaxy. It's just not gonna... It's not gonna go well at all. In any case, like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. Jump over to his channel and uh, give him a like if you like this video. Um, jump in the Discord. Pop in a request for reaction. If you'd like to support the channel, I have a Patreon down below in the description. I'll catch you guys next time.